Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm going to review a product and this is a Sonoff M5. This is their brand new line of uh, smart switches and uh, um, it's been a while since I've done a review video. Uh, for some reason um, my usual Chinese sources they don't really looking for promoting new products. So I'm quite happy to see these. Actually, there is a lot of new stuff that are coming out from Sonoff, so uh, they could be a good source. And I know you guys tend to love the Sonoff video, or at least Google tends to promote them better. And uh, this new M5 switch is going to be a family which will go together with the new NS panel. So it is definitely the same design, they are using the same colors and more importantly I think they are starting to reuse some of the components because if you look at the back side it looks like that this um, box construction where I guess the relays and the power supply is are basically interchangeable between the two units. The only difference you see is size which is not surprising because this M5 unit is actually sold in two different sizes. So there is a size 80 and there is also a size 86, which is a wider unit. And that would match the same size as uh, the NS panel. And just like with other smart switches, these M5 switches are available in one gang, two gang and three gang versions as well. I think there is like a mock-up here on the, well, Okay, there's a mock-up here on the documentation. You can see the relative difference between the size 80 and the size 86. Uh, at the moment, it's only available in this color. In the previous TX series, we had, a, I think, white and black. So now, well, we have gone in the middle. So this is some, some sort of a gray color. I don't think it has any tint, so it's really just a gray color. And what is going to expand this into um, well, a family of products, well, besides the fact that it has the same look and feel as the NS panel, so it would match nicely with the NS panel. They also started manufacturing these frames as well. Again, at the moment, it's only available for the size 80 type switches, and it is available in uh, different sizes, I mean, different number of uh, units that it supports. Uh, I think probably goes all the way up to four or five, but I'm going to just list the websites so you can see it. So if you want multiple switches and you want to align them nicely, you can buy this mounting bracket and at least they would be aligned and you get also this edge, which um, intentionally or not, uh, it's just going to hide the Sonoff logo. So you're getting this matte uh, sort of finish and uh, these nice rounded corners. Going back to the switch that we are going to talk about mostly. So as I said, they are reusing some of the constructions that we have seen from the uh, NS panel already. And this is one of the newer line of switches, meaning that uh, technically inside it contains an ESP32 chip, not an ESP8266. I couldn't really get an information how much memory it has, but I'm guessing it has more memory, which means that the firmware which is running on these devices has the potential to grow smarter in the future. Also, the big difference um, of the M5 as opposed to the TX or the T1 line of switches that the ESP32 uh, has a Bluetooth radio built in as well. So these units will use the Bluetooth pairing, which should be easier than the should be easier and also quicker than the Wi-Fi pairing. And I'm just thinking that maybe one of the reasons they are switching to the ESP32 because the new Matter standard is coming, which is going to use Bluetooth for discovery. Mm, maybe uh, Sonoff is also going to venture into, um, you know, manufacturing matter compatible devices besides being compatible with the Sonoff ecosystem. But this is purely a speculation on my part. Let me go through the unboxing, which is going to be pretty simple. I mean, I already talked about the actual unit itself, so I don't think that there is an awful lot I can say. I mean, uh, we are finding some a mix of metal and plastic parts. I mean, obviously these uh, external ones are, are plastic, but uh, I think the, the bracketed side is metal. As opposed to the TX and the T1 line of switches, this is not a touch switch, it is an actual physical switch, but you don't expect a great amount of motion um, like any traditional switch, because, um, I mean, technically there is just a small micro switch under this basically plastic cover. So as you can see, 
this is how it how much it moves but you are definitely getting a tactile feedback that you have pressed the button there is also a little a uh, little bit of clicking sound and there is a minimal motion on this uh, button face you also get some leds here which is going to illuminate blue when the light is switched off and it's going to illuminate red when it is switched on and of course it is very faint so that's not going to disturb you if you have a uh, uh, if you want to use it in a dark room probably the only other thing i would say is that these switch plate or this uh, uh, piece of plastic it's probably hinges on the top because you can't really press it here you can't even press it in the middle so you really have to press it here at the bottom so this is something that probably you just uh, need to get used to and looking at the back the connections are on top of this black molding and also there is this piece of plastic which is going to cover all your screw terminals so even though this is going to be in the wall uh, you can have an extra layer of protection by sliding this plastic back onto the terminals so even if you would remove it will be more difficult to touch the live terminals here and if I just remove it, you can see that we have, well, in this model, we have four terminals because this is a two gang model. And as you can see, there is a extra terminal for the three gang model. And the connection is pretty much same as, again, as any other smart switch. There is a common neutral, there is a live in, and for the two gangs, there is a live out, live out one and live out two. So just like a TX or a T1, you definitely need a neutral wire in your box uh, in order to install this and uh, make it work so there is no one wire version available from these MY switches or at least not at the moment and like uh, the previous models the they are using a 10 amp relay in these units so you have 10, 10 amp maximum current for each of the outputs so that's roughly 2200 watts or 1200 watts depending on whether you are using this in the US or in Europe also in the box you are getting some mounting screws and you, there is a small uh, leaflet it is the you know the usual format just like before so on the first page you are getting a connection guide how you set up the device and it contains the procedures in five different languages and on the back side you are getting some installation instruction and probably the most important bit is the actual wiring but as i said it has the same type of terminals as let's say an ns panel or a T1 or a TX so connecting this uh, is not going to be any issues so you you use the neutral terminal to connect it to the neutral and then you have the incoming phase the, which comes straight from the uh, switch box that goes to the L1 and then the L out uh, the, well the two L outs go to your lights and of course the the other terminal of the light is also connected to the neutral probably somewhere up in your ceiling i think i'm going to do what i do in most of my other videos is that i just connect the mains power so get this unit uh, working i'm not going to connect lights to it because uh, because we are going to see in the app anyway how we switch the uh, the various outputs on and off the only thing i wanted to show which is uh, still goes into the wiring and the installation is that you have these uh, pegs here you can get with a screwdriver in here and you can just uh, basically pop off the entire front assembly of this unit and that would uh, give you access to these mounting holes so this is how you mount it on the wall and then you just uh, push the front panel back and that's how you install it and at least now you can see how how it looks like when the wire is installed so we discover i can't really touch the terminal so i should be protected from any electrical shock but of course if you are installing or servicing this unit you should really turn off your mains power before you start disassembling anything in your uh, behind your switch okay so i have this unit hooked up to the mains and i'm going to plug this in and uh, i'm going to set up the unit for the first time i usually by the time i come to the review videos the uh, these units are already set up so here i'm just going to click on the plus button i'm going to select bluetooth pairing and i'm just going to validate that the indicators are flashing you can see these different colors so there is a blue flashing color and there is a red on the other one so yes that's flashing and uh, that's the well i'm going to search for devices but i think it's uh it's that's the unit that i want to connect to so i'm just going to press on connect so i just provided my wi-fi name and the password and uh, it literally took then almost less than one second to set up this unit so i'm going to put this into the living room 
And if I switch over to the living room, oh, I already have too much stuff in the living room. Oh, uh, now we can see that I have uh, the M5 uh, 2C. I mean, I haven't renamed it. So you can see it here. And well, as usual, there is a new firmware available. So probably I should go ahead and update the firmware going to this and update now. Okay, the update is complete now, so we can see how this unit works. Oh, by the way, as you can see here, we have a blue indicator light on the left switch. And uh, to be honest, I'm not really sure why is it not uh, illuminated at blue on the other switch. And actually it is a very faint red, uh, but I would have expected that both of them would illuminate blue. I might need to check on that one. But in the app, it is going to appear just like a two gang, either T1 or a TX switch. So you can use both of these, uh, you know, switches just to switch the outputs on and off. And as you can see on the, um, uh, on one of the tabs, I have actually a purple light so on the left one this is actually a purple color for some reason it still appears blue on my phone or sorry on my camera and this one is red and in order to operate these outputs we also get a button which is going to turn both of them on and it's going to turn both of them off and if i want to go through the this, uh, the basic functions here we get a loop timer which uh, i mean i mentioned this so many different times before but here you can set up for example on an alternate uh, on off cycle when the output is going to be on for a certain period of time and off for a certain period of time. Uh, in the timer you can add like a sleep timer so if you turn the output on let's say channel 2 then I can set up a timer that I want channel 2 to turn off after 30 minutes and this activates and this is going to be a one-time thing so if you want this to happen again then when next time you turn it on you have to enable this timer manually and i also have a schedule where i can set the hour and the minute on either every day of the week or just selected days of the week and then at that point either channel one or channel two is going to either turn off or turn on or not going to you know change status and you can have multiple of these schedules so this is your typical you know evening light so the lights automatically come on at 6 p.m when it's getting dark and it's going to stay on until 11 and you can just program these schedules so that's fairly easy and as you can see because i have the timer active it also shows me a small icon next to the timer that uh, you know something is happening there so let's go into the details or in this into the settings so if i click on this free dot then um, i can change the name of the device or i can change the the name of the individual outputs from channel one, channel two to something else. Um, I, have or, I've, I have just updated the firmware version, so that's the current firmware. You can change the room or even the home where this device is at, so how it's going to appear in the app. You can share this device with other EV link users. You can create a group. So if you have multiple switches for the same light, then you can just install these M5 switches in different places and you can just group them together. So when you turn on one of them, the other one will automatically turn on. So with the LED, it's going to indicate uh, the state of the lamp that is connected to. EV-Link remote sub-devices is something new. I haven't seen this option. I'm suspecting that maybe this, is, uh, this has to do something with the fact that it has also Bluetooth radio. So maybe it would be able to link uh, some sub-devices in the future but uh, none of these devices have been released at the moment. So that's probably um, a feature which is coming in the future. You can receive push notification. So if you enable that, your application is going to send you a notification every time somebody switches these uh, switches, which uh, I don't think it would be required. In the logs, you can even see that log and uh, that log could be, uh, could be useful if you are sharing this device because then in the log, it's going to, it's going to tell you who operated the device. So you can see the, uh, there. Um, account ID or the email address. There is a network indicator that you can enable. So that's going to enable or disable the blue light, which is on when even if the switch is uh, turned off. You also have an option to adjust the brightness of these button, uh, of these backlights. I mean, it is still a very, you know, subtle change. So probably this is not going to come uh, through the camera, but yeah, I mean, if you want to um, adjust that, and I think it adjusts the 
the red LEDs. So that's the sort of that's the status LED. But um, based on my experience, it doesn't influence how the how bright the blue LED is uh, is lit. So that's one feature which wasn't available in, in other units. And then we are getting some of the usual suspects as well. So we have a power on state, which is actually quite nice. So here you can influence whether the output should be turned on or off when the power comes back. Because I have seen so many switches that just ultimately turn on when the power comes back, which could be quite annoying. You also have the inching setting. So this is the momentary option. So if I want to use it for the first output, I can enable for channel one. The action is going to be off. So I want the unit to turn off automatically whenever I set it. So if I set it to, let's say one second, and let me just save it. So now if I switch it on, it automatically switches itself off. And of course you can configure this the other way as well. And if you don't like these all on and all off buttons uh, on the UI, you can even hide them with this uh, option here. So as you can see, most of the things that uh, are offered here, of course, with the exception of the sub devices, which we are not able to test at the moment, or the button backlight, it is pretty much the same as a TX or a T1 switch. I think one option which is missing is the interlock mode, but probably this was not used as much and they thought that they can just uh, not include it for the M5. Or maybe it's going to include it in the future firmware, I'm not sure about that. And lastly, I think what we should do is that what I usually do every time is see how this device supports various scenes. And because this is just a simple smart switch, I don't think it's going to be any surprise here. So this device should um, support events whenever the either channel one or channel two is turned on and off. And most probably in the actions as well, I should be able to control, sorry, not this one. I should be able to control the output, either channel one or channel two. And just like before, I can set that whether channel should keep the existing state or turn or, or turn off. So you can have another device that is going to, let's say, turn channel on or turn channel two off. So this is what you can do in uh, the scenes. So this would be my review of the Sonoff M5 series of smart switches. As I said, and sort of as I expected, it's not really bringing anything new, what we haven't seen already. Of course, in physical uh, representation, the new thing is that this is a not, not a touch switch anymore. So this is a physical switch. And I also like the fact that now it is coming as an ecosystem, namely that it uh, in style, it matches the uh, the NS panel and you can also buy these brackets so if you want to install multiple of these next to each other you can do it nicely because these brackets are going to keep them aligned neatly to each other and I also welcome that Sonoff is moving from the ESP8266 to the ESP32 because I think that would open up a lot of potentials in the future and as you can see in my video Pairing something using Bluetooth pairing is a much faster and much simpler process than using the Wi-Fi pairing that we used uh, for most of the previous models. If you are interested in this product, I will leave purchasing links in the video description, but that would be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.